Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to give it another shot at close focus wide angle with a point and shooter, a compact camera in an Ike Light housing, and let's see if we can get some cool images, close focus wide angle with a uh, compact camera. Thanks for tuning in. Let's check it out. Okay, let's see how we did. Um, just to let you know, I shot these images using available light. I tried to keep the sun to my back so that we could illuminate the close subject in the foreground. I did my best to avoid backscatter, but boy, we'll see. I had a lot of trouble with that, keeping my camera in the sand, stirring up backscatter. Even without a strobe or video light, I caused too much backscatter. I shot these in RAW, and I used Lightroom to adjust the white balance in post-processing, which was pretty cool. Then I converted it to a JPEG, and in Adobe Photoshop, I did some minor adjustments, some cropping, minor changes in color, color saturation, contrast, sharpening, and I tried to remove backscatter, but again, I created way too much backscatter. I hope you learn from my mistakes, all right? Remember, with available light, there's three parts to the exposure triangle. There's aperture, but with a big aperture, we pay for that by losing our depth of field. With close focus wide angle, we do want some depth of field. There's ISO. A low ISO is preferred so we don't have noise and we have good quality, but sometimes we have to bump up our ISO to get a quick enough shutter speed. And then there's the shutter speed. We want um, a fast enough shutter speed to avoid motion blur from our camera moving or the subject moving. But uh, too quick of a shutter speed, we're going to end up uh, with not enough light. So uh, we'll talk about this. I'm going to show you what our f-stop and ISO and shutter speed was on most of these images. I used aperture priority because I wanted to sort of control the depth of field. And then I adjusted my ISO. And of course, the shutter speed uh, defaulted to get the proper exposure. So let's check out the images. This was the first shot I was very excited to take. Saw this beautiful seahorse at about 10 feet depth in bright sunlight. And I was going to have my uh, dive buddy, my wife, behind the seahorse. Thought this was going to be a great close focus wide angle image. You can see the aperture, the ISO, and the uh, uh, shutter speed. I probably didn't need such a high ISO because it was bright sunlight. And the um, I shot these all in aperture priority. So the um, shutter speed defaulted to 1 800ths of a second, which was plenty fast. Two problems with this. Tremendous backscatter that I've caused that you can see especially on the diver's black wetsuit. And most importantly, the sun was not to my back. It was kind of in front of me and to the left. And um, the seahorse is not illuminated. It's kind of in the shadow. So very disappointing overall. Too bad. Here I saw these beautiful sea, sea hares, a type of a slug. And um, I didn't get close enough or low enough for this. I didn't achieve separation of the sea hairs from the sandy seafloor. Uh, my wife, the dive buddy, is in good focus. She's got a good profile. She's looking at the subject, and I got most of her. Everything's in focus, but didn't get good separation, and I'm not really close enough to the sea hairs in the foreground. Here I got closer, and, and now I've locked on focus to the sea hair in the foreground, but my dive buddy's a little blurred. At aperture 5.6, that's kind of small for a compact camera. So I was a little disappointed that the dive buddy wasn't in a little better focus. It might have been, and also there's tremendous backscatter. Unfortunately, I had my camera kind of resting on the sandy seafloor, and I just myself stirred up too much backscatter. I tried to remove some of it in Adobe Photoshop, but obviously I don't have the time or inclination to remove all that backscatter. Now here I had a great opportunity, saw this beautiful flying Gurnard, my dive buddy was behind it. I didn't achieve separation, though it blends in with the sandy seafloor, I didn't get low enough. And I cut off the top of my dive buddy. Here I did get lucky. Okay, this is about 15 feet depth, available, all available light, open aperture, and everything's sharp. Uh, the ISO is 200, I could have probably even gone lower because the shutter speed's still very fast at 1 800th of a second, which is what it defaulted to in aperture priority. Uh, this is a, one of my favorite shots. I got a little bit of separation of the flying Grunard. You can see part of the blue water background. There is some backscatter, but not too much, and the diver has a good profile. I love this shot. It's got a beautiful flying Grunard and my dive buddy in the same image. Um, this one I was disappointing. This is an octopus with my dive buddy. Basically, I was just too far away from the main subject. The octopus is too small. There's too much of the foreground in the foreground. Here, I'm closer, but unfortunately, I didn't lock my focus onto the octopus. The focus kind of is more on the dive buddy, so the octopus in the foreground is blurred. Also, there's backscatter, and I caught my dive buddy when she was exhaling bubbles. Too bad. 
This is probably my favorite image of the whole dive. It's a relatively low aperture f8. That's a low. That's a small aperture for a compact camera. And I kept. I bumped up the ISO to uh, 320. I wanted to have a quick enough shutter speed, which I did at 1 to 125 seconds. And I love that image. The octopus is clear. You can see some of the suction cups on its leg. My dive buddy is a little blurred, and I cut off the top of uh, the dive buddy. But overall, I really love that image. So I hope you found this helpful. Well, there you have it. To conclude. For this dive attempting close focus wide angle with a compact camera and mostly using natural light, I had the usual problems. Not close enough to the near subject, not low enough so I did not achieve separation from the seafloor of the near subject and or my distant subject, the diver was, the top of the diver was cut off. I didn't always have the sun to my back uh, so I had shadows on the near subject. But the main problem on this dive was severe backscatter that I mostly caused from having my camera down on the sandy seafloor. And, um, you know, I don't mind trying to touch up my pictures a little bit in Photoshop, but I just don't have enough time or interest in removing all those little backscatter uh, particles. So anyway, I hope you learned from some of my mistakes, and uh, I hope this was helpful. Thanks a lot for tuning in.